How's it going, buddy? Yeah, pretty good, dude. You know, the last time you were here was, a t I'm a bit of a nostalgia guy myself. It's uh, September 23rd, 2010. Remember that? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I remember it like it was five years ago, yeah. September 23rd. <laughs> it, seems, it seems like yesterday, Vinny Pastor. Yeah, we were hanging out with Vinny, and uh, yeah, but hey, what's, what's five years between friends? And we got something to talk about. And uh, listen, I've been seeing you throughout the, uh, the years coming to that metal show. And yeah, coming to the tapings. The chiller. Chiller Theater, yeah, yeah. Can't be chiller. Now listen, for people who don't know you, because the last time you were on, we really didn't talk about it. Why don't you give everybody a little family background, where you're from, your neighborhood. Uh, my name, what I, I, that's not the kind of information I like to give out, Johnny. All right. There's some very shady looking characters in your audience. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm a Jersey guy, man. I come from Jersey, and you know, that's where I grew up. Always? I, pretty much, yeah, man. You know, Jersey guy, so. Lived in Manhattan for a bunch of years, but uh, bought a house back in Jersey uh, about four years ago, just in time to get destroyed by Hurricane Sandy, so yeah, everything's good. Wow. Unbelievable. So how old were you when you got into comedy? Uh, I started late, you know, man. I started when I was 29, and now that I'm almost 30, I think I'm, you know, really getting the hang of it. <laughs> now, what was actually your career? What, what did you actually want to do with your life? I mean, how'd you fall into comedy? I mean, was it just from your friends going to go see them? I just, you know what, man? I always loved comics. When I, when I was a kid, I used to listen to, you know, Richard Pryor and George Carlin tapes, like, the in my school. room with the Radio Shack cassette recorder, and <laughs> yeah, I put yeah. the little thing in my ear because, you know, I didn't want my parents hearing me listen to this stuff, man. And I just always loved comics. And even though I didn't understand a lot of it when I was like 11, I knew it was subversive, uh -huh. you know, and I knew it was something I wanted to be involved with. And then that's how my love, you know, of hard rock and metal started, the same thing. Like when I saw Kiss Destroyer, I was like. That was my first record. Yeah, man, it's like these are superheroes, they're rock stars, they're comic book characters all rolled into one, you know? And so here it is years later, and like those two worlds for me have collided, which is cool. Yeah, like when we got those albums when we were a kid, it was like the best thing in the world, right? Yeah, because I was like, they're, they're, everything rolled into one, you know, like what could be better than this? You know, so I put the, all the Kiss posters on my wall, up on my ceiling, my parents went crazy, where's this all going to lead to, you know, so... Here we are, like I said, you know, 40 years later. And I got my man cave. I still got the Kiss posters up. Really? <laughs> yeah. They're all downstairs in my basement. Nice. Yeah. It's, I don't want to grow up to a point. You just That's where you go and you hide out and you forget about the world. Yeah, but I mean, we're, you know, we're, like, we're not going to change what kind of music we like at this point. I'm not going to just start listening. I'm not going to get Bieber fever all of a sudden. I'm 49. <laughs> my girlfriend's like, why don't you sell everything here? We could get something with this. I go, I go, I got a lot of stuff, but what do you really think I'm going to get for this? Like, she thinks I got like a million dollars worth of stuff. Right, well, it's, you know, it's sentimental value. Uh, yeah, it's sentimental value, 100,000 100, percent. Now, you've been doing a lot of stuff lately. You got a new stand up CD, uh, title Live and Hello. Hilarious. And you got the other tele, terrorizing telemarketers, volume six. This is with you and Jim Florentine, right? Yeah, we, uh, you know. Talk every, about this. Uh, well, everybody hates telemarketers, right? So, you know, while, while your nice viewers and the nice people in the studio audience are out doing constructive things for society, Jim and I have nothing to do during the day. So we wait home for telemarketers to call and we torture them and we make albums. I remember when you first came on, let's get a camera shot of this. I remember when you were first on the show and you were talking about this and we were talking about the Jerky Boys. Yeah. Carmel and everybody, how they, they were your influences. Well, yeah, come, you, know, you know, Kamal and Johnny were the first people to do it on a grand you know, schedule. And I know, and I know, I know uh, Kamal very well and he's always like, he goes, you guys are good, but don't forget who the, the creators were. No, he's go, the, yeah, absolutely. No, yeah. he's the best. He's like one guy you talk to, and he busts your chops and just let him get away with it. Yeah, well, you know, well, look, I mean, it's, it's cool to be able to make prank CDs, and it went to number two on the comedy charts on iTunes. So yeah. It's good that people, you know, Top they still want to laugh. On the, on the comedy charts, right? Yeah. On the Billboard, yeah, good for you, man. And number nine on Billboard, yeah. So um, we appreciate everybody supporting our, our nonsense. We both had relationships break up around the same time, so we had a lot of rage, so we had to take it out on somebody. Now talk about your live CD, the new one. No, I got a live CD. Called, Second one, right? I've got two, yeah. yeah. They're both out on a record label called Metal Blade Records. Metal Blade Records, great. And they, you know, Metal Blade is obviously a heavy metal label, but, you know, they've been putting out my CDs now, which is really cool. They put that one out as well. And, you know, the thing is, when you're a comic, you, you don't want to be censored. So, no, you know, to be on a label that had, you know, Slayer and, and, and Cannibal Corpse, pretty sure they're not going to censor my comedy. Yeah, well, like, look at a lot of stuff that Chris Rock is doing these days. I mean, it's all raw. 
Well, yeah, I mean, and, you know, I always say that thing in my act about, you know, let's not be politically correct, because you got to make sure, the, like, you got to remind people it's okay to laugh, you know. <laughs> you know, we're, it's, it's comedy. It's not take this stuff seriously. I think They're la jokes, I think and people in this country have lost their sense of humor. Laughing is the best form of medicine. I mean, I love to, I mean, it, it is. We, we live in a serious society. There's a lot of problems and everything else, but laughing, I think, is great. Well, yeah, I mean, look, when, you, when you're when you Donald Trump and, you, and you're in the middle of a debate and you make Rosie O'Donnell fat jokes and people laugh, you're like, oh, this is great, you know? It is great to Trump a point. Trump for president, man. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just his only downfall. I mean, yeah, it's funny in the beginning, but, I mean, if he's going to really go to the end, I think yeah. he just has to, I mean, my opinion, and a lot of pe people I talk to, that he has to, does pull it back a little. He could do that, but... By doing that, you're gonna, he's going he's gonna to ruin himself yeah. and lose a lot of the votes from people that he could probably get the votes from. I mean, you know, I don't know. Anybody's better than Obama, and that's all I have to say. Well, we'll see what happens. But, Don, it's always a pleasure. Yeah, thank Johnny, you so thank much. You, man. Don Jameson, everybody. It. Thank you, guys. Comedian Don Jameson, you'll be seeing him real soon.